Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, and in this video we are doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows XP Professional with Service Pack 3 in VirtualBox. Now you can consider this the updated tutorial on uh, installing Windows XP Professional in VirtualBox. Uh, this is using the ISO used in the VMware tutorial that I did fairly recently here, um, which includes Service Pack 3 and also added on to that includes the latest version of Internet Explorer, which is Internet Explorer 8 that runs on Windows XP, and then also Windows Media Player 11, which is also the latest version that runs on Windows XP. Um, so a couple added things there, of course, with that. So without further ado, we'll certainly go ahead and begin the tutorial here. Um, the links will be in the description here for both VirtualBox and the ISO. So of course, the download page uh, will be there if you want to get that downloaded or need that. Um, you can download that for your specified OS here. And then of course, there'll be the link in the description for the ISO off of the uh, Internet Archive website, uh, which should be called Windows XP Professional Service Pack 3 Preactivated with Internet Explorer 8 and Windows Media Player 11. Um, you'll download it, the ISO and the options here. And again, credit goes to Aaron E on Internet Archive for the ISO. Uh, so shout out to him for um, the ISO that is on the site here. Um, with those things being downloaded now, um, we can go ahead and open up VirtualBox here, and then we're going to create a new virtual machine, and I'm going to call this uh, Windows XP SP3 for Service Pack 3, and then it should automatically select the version as Windows XP 32-bit. Uh, leave that as is, since it is the 32-bit version of the operating system. Once that is selected, um, go ahead and hit next. It's going to ask how much RAM you want to dedicate to it. The recommended it has is 192 megabytes. I'd recommend up, upgrading that to at least 512 megabytes. I'm going to do a gig. Um, you can upgrade it to, I believe, the 32-bit version of XP goes up to 2 gigs that it supports. I mean, you can put more on it if you want, but usually 1 to 2 gigs is fine for... Uh, running Windows XP, especially the 32-bit version. So once you have your RAM set, uh, go ahead and hit next. And then we're gonna create our virtual hard disk by hitting create. So on the uh, file type here, you can pick any one of these file types for the hard disk. Go ahead and hit next. Um, can pick either dynamically allocated fixed size. You can read more on which what the difference is between the two. And hit next. And then uh, again, that recommended size is 10 gigs. That's what I'd recommend the minimum to be at. You can increase it if you want. Uh, the install I think takes actually about three to four gigs. Um, so I would recommend at least having 10 gigs, but you can increase it if you wish. Once you've got your specified amount, go ahead and hit create. And then it will create your uh, machine here. So it'll be at the bottom of the list if you have some other machines already. Um, if you've installed VirtualBox for the first time and have no machines, it will show up at the top, but just make sure it's highlighted. And then go into settings. We're going to get our ISO inserted here by going to storage and going to the empty disk tab here, hitting the disk and hit choose a file. And then you'll want to locate to where you have the uh, ISO saved and uh, should be called something along the lines of Windows XP Professional SP3 pre-activated with IE8 and WMP11 uh, to ISO here. So um, once you have that located, go ahead and get that inserted there. And then go ahead and hit OK, and then we can go ahead and start the machine. So it will start the virtual machine here, and it will come up to our classic Windows setup blue screen page here that we all know very well from Windows XP. And then it will go ahead and load everything up here, load all the files and start the setup. And then it will bring us to the first portion, portion here. So uh, it'll ask us what we want to uh, select for the partition or where to um, install. Of course, it should only have your own partition space and however much space you dedicated to it. So just hit enter on that. And then you can do either uh, formatting the NTFS uh, file system or file NTFS file system quick. This one will just go a little quicker if you select that. But regardless, choose one of the NTFS options. It'll format your drive, do a quick examine of the disk, and then it will copy the files over here, which um, since we're on hardware, 
Obviously, it depends a little bit on what you have, but it shouldn't take as long. Obviously, on real hardware back in the day, this took quite a long time. So, of course, this is nice about having the virtual machine capabilities as the installs for the older operating systems go much quicker than they did in real time back in the day. So, um, just let that copy through the files here, and then once it's done, it will go ahead and have us reboot. So, it will reboot automatically there. And then do not press any key to boot from the CD or you'll just go in a constant loop there and then you'll see the Windows XP boot logo here. And so it will load up here and it'll load up into our first portion of the graphical interface of the setup uh, that we're all familiar with. And we'll get to that portion of installing Windows and then uh, the first part that comes up under the uh, time approximation is installing devices. So it will load through that part of the install. And then once it's done with that, it should come up with our first uh, screen that we can click through here. So we'll wait for the installing devices to complete. And once again, the nice thing is that this won't take as long as it did before, because some of these steps in this graphical part, when it was loading through of like copying files and everything, um, also did take quite a bit of time so that also is nice that it will save us some time with that so it will come up and ask us to enter in a name and organization you don't have to enter an organization you just need to enter a name so just whatever enter whatever you want there basically this shows up when you do like the right click on my computer and hitting properties uh, it'll shows up with who it's registered to so basically you want to type in who you want to say it's registered to and then hit next and then choose a name for your computer. You can leave it at that if you want. I'm just going to call mine uh, Windows uh, XP Pro SP3. Just uh, kind of as an example. You can type in an admin password if you want. You can leave that blank to um, set it to not have one and hit next. And then this will show your time, date and time and uh, time zone here. So you can change it to your specified time zone if you wish. And then it'll show the current date and time and hit next. And we'll come up with the installing network portion here. So we'll load through that. And then it will begin to copy the files over. So, um, of course, as you can see at this, uh, that portion did not take very long at all. And then it's going to go through some other steps of the install too. So you see on this part, it is installing start menu items. And now it is going through registering components. And you can see the time on the uh, prompt here where it says setup will complete in approximately 16 minutes that you can see is going down quite quickly there. And so usually the setup takes oh, about five minutes at the most, I believe. Um, but again, it just kind of depends still a little bit on what hardware you have on your actual PC for it um, and where you're saving these drives to because it could go even quicker if you're saving it to an SSD or uh, an NVMe drive. I think this is actually being saved to my big um, hard drive, so it's not on an SSD or NVMe. So it could go quicker if it was on one of those, but it's not in this case. So uh, once it completes through those prompts, it will reboot. And then once again, when this comes up, just don't press any key to boot from the CD. It'll come up with the boot logo again here and it will say, please wait. And then of course it will come up with the display settings to go ahead and automatically adjust the resolution. So hit okay on that, it'll make it a little bit bigger. Just hit okay again, and then it will load up the boot screen and we should hear, I believe if we have audio, the music should start playing here in a few moments. So it does play the audio here, so that means we do have audio working on this. So we'll hit next. You can pick either one of these options. I'm just gonna do automatic, even though it doesn't really matter. Just hit next. It's gonna check for internet connectivity and internet should work off the bat on this. Um, 
So just leave it on uh, that it will connect through a local area network if you want to use, make sure internet services are working and hit next. Uh, don't register with Microsoft, hit next. And then this is where you'll want to type in your username for your user account. You can add more if you want and hit next. And it'll say thank you and we can hit finish and it should play the uh, startup sound here. So it does play through, audio continues to work, which is good to see. And we have the operating system installed. Um, so now the uh, next thing you can do if you'd like um, is get uh, VirtualBox Guest Editions installed on this. So you can do that by going up to Devices and hitting Insert Guest Edition CD Image. And I'm actually gonna turn, if I can, it looks like it's just going to stay the same there. Unfortunately, with the volume, it's uh, I think it can be changed once guest edition is installed. So once that's inserted, um, if it doesn't start right away, go ahead and hit start and go to my computer and then double click on the guest editions here. And it will load up the setup wizard for it. So hit next, uh, next and install. And we'll go through with installing the drivers here. And this will be able to help with uh, getting higher uh, screen resolutions here as well, even though I think it goes up to a decent amount already with what it has pre-installed. So it will run through the driver installations and sometimes it might take a little bit for some of those to go ahead and install here. But then once it's done, it will have us go ahead and reboot the operating system here and then it will complete the installation so um, if it does take a bit just kind of let it sit and do its thing here and then it should finish the installation and eventually have us reboot so i'll uh wait for this to get finished and uh we'll come back here once it's all uh, finished installing the drivers and ready for rebooting if it does get stuck here you can do a machine reset um, sometimes that happens with the guest, uh, guest machine, guest editions install. So we'll go ahead and root it. You can tell the audio is a lot quieter than it was before. I shouldn't say a lot, but it's definitely quieter than it was before since you can actually adjust it. Um, and you can see the screen is a little bigger and you can adjust the resolution a little bit higher, uh, now. So, um, and yeah, if you go down to the volume here, it really doesn't change that much, but it is a little quieter now that the fact that it has its guest editions installed, which is good. But uh, that concludes everything here, and that is the tutorial on how to install Windows XP with uh, Professional with Service Pack 3 and VirtualBox. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video, uh, certainly can leave a like down below, and if it did help you as well, leave a like down below. And if you have any ideas for any future videos, you can leave your comments down below for any ideas on that. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you can subscribe down below um, by hitting the subscribe button and hitting the post notification bell to be notified when I upload uh, new videos and keep up to date on my content. So once again, that is the video tutorial on how to install Windows XP Professional with Service Pack 3 and VirtualBox. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.